Hello and welcome to South Korea. Although that is North Korea, where at this very moment, Donald Trump is meeting Kim Jong-un. An historic moment. Historic indeed. But on to more important matters. Because we're on a mission to find out how a country which didn't even mass produce its own car until 1975 has managed to turn itself into one of the biggest car producers in the world. We've got exclusive access to Kia's biggest car factory. And latest models. <laughs> Get a look at the emerging tuning culture. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and very cool. And we'll meet the ex-chief engineer from BMW. He's been brought in to develop the driving dynamics of the new sports models. All on his own private test track. So where exactly are we going to start this trip, Johnny? Where all new cars start their journey. A car factory. Ooh. Back in 1987, Kia only made 95,000 cars. But now, thanks to a quite astonishing level of scale and automation, that figure is 3 million plus. This is the enormous Hwasung factory, which covers 3.3 million square metres. And today we've been allowed an exclusive whistle-stop tour down on one of the assembly lines here to get an insight into how that scale and speed of production is achieved. So, this production line three, 176 thousand cars on this production line a year. Alone. Johnny, in there, there is 2.3 kilometers of conveyor belts. That sounds amazing, Jimmy. Show me it. We're starting here at the press shop, where the steel is cut and stamped. Every five seconds, out pops another panel for the car. 110,000 tonnes of steel is used a year. It's absolutely amazing. These stamps are giving it 2,400 tonnes of pressure. So it's drawing it, it's trimming it, it's piercing it, yeah. and it's flanging it, and it kicks it out. And the only thing the human does is at the end just eye checks it, feels Make sure it. Makes it's perfect, yeah. Right, he's thorough. 13,000 people work at the factory alongside 280 robots that perform a choreographed building and welding routine. You would stand and watch this literally all day. It is a robotic ballet. Hello, mate. You, I'm a little bit scared of robots. <laughs> it's amazing. I like the fact that even the robots are made in Korea. Really? Yeah, they're Hyundai robots. This part of the build process is fully mechanised as the robots build the car's entire body shell. They're going to get they'll have a left hand one, a right hand one, and then a root that root section on the floor pan. We're going to see those all be robotically welded together. You've got to keep everything moving all the time. And before we knew it, something recognisable started to emerge. Okay. There's a car, there's oh a car. Oh my gosh, yeah, oh, look. look. Incredible. How quick, how precise. Look at that, that go to work. This is Willy Wonka yes. if he was yeah. to build a Kia. This is completely automated at a level I've never seen. Yeah, me too. You say they're making 74 cars an hour? Around about, around 2,000 a day. I mean, that's just, just such big numbers. On to assembly and more mind-boggling stats. How many engines are they making here a year? 1.2 million, 600,000 gearboxes, three variants. Was it like something like five different types of engine? Yeah. Here, a year. Yeah. yeah. It's just. And this is one factory. Just in this plant alone. Yeah. They're fitting an engine to this car every 72 seconds. And that's with struts, brakes, steering rack. It takes me longer to pop the bonnet and fumble around for the bonnet catch. At the end of the line, quality control. The cars are checked from every angle. Oh, look, there you Excuse go. me, Johnny, I'm just going to have a, just a quiet moment So you now. get to look at an undercarriage. It's clean. Of, it? of a box fresh Kia. Optima done. It's clear the Korean attention to detail is very much to the fore, with a final human eye giving the cars a visual inspection. It's all good? Yeah, he's happy with it, look. Even having witnessed just a snapshot of this high-tech process, it's clear why the Korean industry has grown so rapidly. This feels like quite a progressive location. I mean, massively. 280 robots, everything moving on conveyor belts. There's just the quantity of everything and the relentlessness. Just utterly mind-blowing. Yeah. Finally, we were invited to drive a finished car out of the building. A real honour. 
don't hit anything, Johnny. No, because it's brand, brand, brand new. Each vehicle then has to complete a two-kilometre test drive as yet another check of quality. This is random. Are we even on the right side of the road? No, we're it's actually not. No. After the factory visit earlier, I'd heard rumours about the newly emerging tuning scene in Korea, so I headed to the outskirts of Seoul to find out more. Until recently, tuning your car in Korea was virtually impossible because the government put so much red tape in the way that hardly anybody bothered. In fact, a survey that was conducted in 2014 revealed that most Koreans thought any form of car tuning was totally illegal. But then the government had a change of heart. They looked at other countries and they realised that the tuning industry was rather big business. Take the USA, for example. It generates over $34 billion of income per year. Based on those figures, unsurprisingly, the Korean government decided to make the tuning process a bit more accessible. Unlike the UK, you still need to make a separate application for each tuning job. But now you can do that online, and as long as the car conforms to the government regulations, it can often be approved within a day and Korea's car tuning has taken off as a result. Today, I'm at one of the country's top tuners, Torcon Power Labs, to see which machines are popular when the spray guns and spanners come out. They'll typically do about 50 jobs a month that are quite minor, like little induction kits and that sort of stuff, exhausts, and they'll do five major, like engine transplants, full engine rebuilds, so it's busy. Business is brisk. There's a definite trend of cars that are favourable. Most of the cars that get modified here are domestic cars, so they're Korean cars. Take this, for example. This is a Veloster N. So this is pretty much a brand new car, and already it's been heavily modified. This started life with a two litre engine developing 240 horsepower. It's now 400 horsepower. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and very cool. But the Koreans don't stop at tinkering under the bonnets. They go to town on the bodywork and the interiors too. Look at the quality, look at the execution. And you've got little influences from like Japanese, like the clip-on arches with the visible rivets, the tyre lettering, that's really fashionable at the moment. Some of the cars are running like air suspension, like that Lexus over there. That and the Mini are the only non-Korean cars here. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's mad in here. It's brilliant, though. Some really good, tasteful stuff. Way more tasteful than the stuff my mates were doing when they were 20. This is real carbon body kits, real carbon bonnets. There's loads of carbon inside the car, so there's some money being spent here. Talking of money, in the UK, tuned cars can get caned when it comes to insurance. In Korea, they keep the premiums down by halving the payouts in the event of an accident. So if you add 10 grand's worth of mods, the insurance will only cough up five. So it's a bit of a risk. You've got to really want to do it. As for parts, the Koreans import a lot from America and Japan, who have been at it for decades. However, places like Torcon are now producing their own bits and pieces and then exporting. Chief tuner Tony Kang has agreed to take me out for a ride in the modified Veloster N. I don't expect much banter here. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Tony's English isn't the best. So is it mostly like, farming in this countryside here? The lots of farms? Oh. My English is no good. Yeah. It's better than my Korean, trust me. This 20 grand car has had nearly another 20 grand spent on the modifications, including an uprated turbocharger, a sports exhaust, and lightweight carbon fiber panels. And once out of the quiet residential streets, Tony was able to open it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pulling. In 2014, the Korean tuning business was worth $500 million. Five years later, it's worth almost $4 billion, and it's still climbing like a rocket. The thing about Korea that I've noticed is once a trend has been spotted or a piece of technology explored, it gets exploited really quickly. The rate of evolution is quicker than anywhere, quicker even than, I think, Japan or China. The Koreans came late to the tuning party, but have already caught up with the Western world. 
and now the Korean government is actively supporting the industry with grants in certain regions in the hope that high quality, low cost items become in demand all over the world. So who knows, the next tuning component on your car might come from these very shores. Welcome back to the final part of our quest to find out how, in just 25 years, the South Koreans have gone from a smaller niche car manufacturer to being one of the biggest car producers in the world. So far, we've witnessed their advanced production processes and seen how the tuning scene has taken off in a rapid way. There's some money being spent here. Now, we all know the Koreans are popular for churning out reliable family motors with long warranties. But can they really make an eye-catching sports saloon? Well, yes, actually. Johnny, Proceed GT, what do you think? It is really nice. Look, you've got the red accents because it's a GT. Not chrome, smoked out, anodized plastic. I'm confused. Is it a coupe? Is it a hatchback? Is it an estate? The truth is, nobody really knows. It's, it's a little styling bracket all of its own. And look how Porsche Panamera is It really this is. Bump. Those lights, and even this, and you think it's going to say Porsche, but it's a Kia. It's clean and stylish. It is. For very cheap money. You get this car for under £30,000. Yes. Come on in, Stato. What is under there? 1.6 four-cylinder turbo, 204 HP. So we're not talking epic power. It's got the elements of a playful hot hatch, but it's not... Ah, it's not like... Mm. Too leery. No, it's not mental. Should we get in and take it for a spin? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Are you driving again? Of course I am. I'm the wheel man in this relationship. <laughs> this new GT model has just been released, and this is my first chance to get behind the wheel. Do you know what? I'm enjoying this. It's got the comfort, it's got the nimbleness. It feels quite German. So, our first look and drive of the new Pro C GT has been pretty positive. It seems the Koreans really can now build in style and fun factor to their cars. And some of that design and performance is thanks to this man, the head of research and development, Albert Biermann. Biermann is a legend in the automotive industry because he's previously headed up BMW's fabled M division and in doing so, created some of the finest handling sports cars in the world. He's now head of research at Kia and sister company Hyundai. So this man influences a lot of the cars we drive. Kia, obviously known for their family cars, but your sort of concentration is performance cars. What's the goals of the company? So in Kia, we uh, developed the GT label for the more sportier cars. Like yeah. Have a little bit driving character, a little bit more precise. Yeah, give it a little bit more fun. Have yeah. you got any more cars in development at the moment? Oh, of course, tons of them, but I cannot talk about this today. Just talk about a couple. I'd be happy with just a few. <laughs> yeah, just no, a few. Just no, two. No, that's not even on. Those cameras aren't on. No, we, we cannot talk about those. <laughs> but Albert could talk about the Pro C GT and was keen to demonstrate how and where it had been developed. I can show you our, our playground here. It's a lot of fun, I can tell you. Take us for a drive. OK, let's go. And Albert's playground is this, the Namyang facility. It's a vast 5,000-acre site buried in the Korean countryside and employs 20,000 people. Albert and his team take testing very seriously, so seriously that they have an astonishing 34 different test tracks at their disposal. Not surprisingly, security is tight. However, when the boss of the place decides to show you around, it's amazing how the rules can suddenly change. And it was immediately apparent that Albert likes to properly test his cars. How fast are we going? 200 kilometers per hour. <laughs> so Albert, taking just your standard road car, what are the challenges you face in taking that and giving it this sporty feel? So the steering tuning is unique, yeah? Matching with the bigger tires, with the higher grip, but also the roll control, the tuning of roll damping with shock absorber system and the, the roll bars. More tuning, more attention yeah. to get it to that point, yeah. right? First up, a run on Kia's own section of motorway. This is good for a load transfer, you know, evaluate, steering return. You're doing all right back there, Jimmy? The handle has come into play, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. 
then Albert will test the suspension on any new prototypes on a specially constructed city circuit with bumps and potholes. Here we evaluate like aftershake, the tuning of shock absorber spring. Hang on a minute. But I don't think he understands you're supposed to slow down for speed bumps. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh camera change, harsh. You have a lot of tools in the toolbox to, yeah. to make a nice balanced car. At this point, Albert had to depart. However, he left us with his pass. And that allowed us to investigate a couple more facilities at Namyang. Starting with Asia's biggest wind tunnel. In these days of efficiency and low emissions, aerodynamics are all important. It is absolutely fascinating to look at. It's amazing, it's mesmerizing. Now, we're only doing just over 50 kilometers an hour wind speed today, but this fan can be ramped up to produce 200 kilometers an hour speed. No, I'm not going to stand here when they do that. I'm just not. I'm really glad I cut my hair just before doing this. The car is bolted down so that it doesn't move laterally. And you can see each wheel has its own little rolling road. But then there's a giant rolling road, like a treadmill under the car, to simulate the surface of the road passing under the car. Because that will create wind turbulence as well. While Johnny was experiencing the effects of extreme wind, I found the place where they test grip in the most atrocious conditions possible. And if you don't recognise the car being tested, then don't be surprised. That is a Kia K9, their version of a BMW 7 Series, not available in the UK. It's likely that with the advanced development programme here, a BMW and Mercedes rival could soon be on the cards. And that, along with the GT cars, makes it really feel like the Koreans have moved on from just reliable family wagons. So, uh... We going home? Is this the end of our career trip? I, I feel that this is it. But I also feel that it won't be long before we have to come back here. We've been here for three days and have seen the transformation of the Korean car industry firsthand. How many engines are they making here a year? 1.2 million. Thanks to a combination of cutting edge technology and industrialization on a massive scale, they're making major advances in car production and development. This is completely automated at a level I've never seen. Yeah, me too. And even now look to be taking on the world in car tuning with their unique creations. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and very cool. At this rate of progress, just think where they'll be in the near future.